Please welcome Alex to the stage. Good morning and thank you for having me. Most of you would uh, know me as Ms. Darlinghurst in the digital world and today I wanted to just share a little bit, uh, a couple of the reasons as to why I love food and a little bit about my journey over the last three years uh, and the changes that I've made to pursue my passion. Uh, but it goes back a little bit further to that. So I'm a country girl originally. I grew up in the outback in a place called Broken Hill, famous for not much else other than Mad Max and Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Let's just say there's not a lot of food options out there. Uh, I had Luxor for the first time when I moved to Sydney and there was one Chinese shop run by Anita and her husband. But I, did have, uh, I do have a Greek mother uh, and she taught us all about food. And much like Costa, in our family, food was a way of sharing your love. Uh, so we had organic, uh, biodynamic and organic produce in the backyard and chickens running around. So from a really early age, I was exposed to food and I guess was born to be a foodie. When I moved to Sydney to study journalism, I um, was exposed to a number of wonderful food options. So I studied my journalism degree and at the end of it, I came out and somehow I fell into the world of recruitment, selling my soul, wearing a suit to work every day. And I did that for about four years. And it wasn't until one day when I had this real Zoolander moment, I was like, who am I staring into a puddle? Why am I wearing a suit? Making really good money, but just kind of going through life and going through the motions. And I thought, surely there's more out there. And blogging at the time in Sydney, uh, there's a lot of food bloggers out there at the time uh, now, but at the time there weren't too many. And I really wanted to get back into writing. So I started a food blog called Eat, Drink, Play. Living in Darlinghurst, I created the alias of Ms. Darlinghurst. So by day, I was Alex Adams wearing a suit to work every day, and by night, I was Ms. Darlinghurst running around, writing about cafes, restaurants, bars, and it started getting quite a big following online, and people other than my mother started reading it, and that was quite nice. And about a year into that, I had been following Gorilla Dining, a pop-up dining, uh, that sort of movement over in the UK and the States, New York, and also Melbourne to an extent, that underground dining scene, and was really, really inspired. And I came up with the idea of secret foodies uh, and I invited 10 friends and I said, guys, we're going to a secret dinner party. You won't know where you're going until two hours before when I send you a text message. Bring one friend I've never met before. Now, being a country girl, um, I was the sort of person, I didn't know how to catch a train until I came to Sydney and I used to sit on the train and say hello to everyone and I'm quite a friendly country bumpkin. But Sydney can be quite clicky compared to a lot of other cities in the world. So I thought, what a great way to meet new people, try new places. So those 20 people came. We did it at a venue uh, and a restaurant that had just opened. Had a fantastic night. We met the owners of the restaurant. We got to know a little bit more about their food philosophy, what was their passion behind what they were doing. Had a great time. So that was on Friday night. On the Saturday, I wrote a review on the Secret Foodies website that I'd built myself on a dodgy blog spot. And on the Monday, I quit my job. I was like, I'm out. Handed in my four weeks notice. Was like, I found what I want to do. I'm going to run secret dinner parties for a living. Now I was on a pretty good wicket. I was a sales manager. I was making pretty good money. And my boss just looked at me and thought, you're crazy. And I was like, well, maybe I am. But I know that I can't go another day wearing a suit to work doing this when my dream job is out there. So it's been about two and a half years now since I started Secret Foodies. And we've done over 80 events in the last two and a half years. The team has grown. Um, I've now got a team of three other foodies who work at Secret Foodies. Uh, the Eat, Drink, Play newsletter that goes out every Wednesday now goes out to nearly 20,000 people in Sydney. So it has a really, really big reach. Ms. Darlinghurst tips on where to eat, drink and play. Uh, we've worked with some amazing chefs. We've popped up in random locations from a rooftop to a warehouse to a laneway. And I always say to my friends that I make, I work double the hours, I probably make half the money that I did in recruitment, but I've never been happier. And that's my little story about how I started with a little seed and a, a little idea and a little passion and how it's grown and will continue to grow. Um, and that's what I've experienced over the last three years. Thank you for having me.